want to uh, issue a warrant for your intelligent arrest and summon you to Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. Once you've found it, would you please stand to your feet? Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. If you don't have a Bible, would you be kind and Christian enough to share with somebody close by? Numbers chapter 13. Thank you, sir. And I want to uh, illuminate for your understanding verses 30 through 33. Numbers 13, verses 30 through 33. When you found it, won't you say, I got it. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We shall go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. Look at the person beside you and tell them we can do it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We can't attack these people. They are stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, the land we explore devours those living in it. All the people we see there are of a great size. We saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Anak, come from Nephilim. We seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we look the same to them. You may be seated. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. Let me appropriately appreciate the remnant of empowerment who's with us on tonight. I want to preach Elder Owens using as a subject, I don't want to stay this size. I don't want to stay this size. Look at the person beside you. Tell them you can't stay the condition you're in. You cannot stay the condition you're in. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a, a protocol to the ascension of new authority. The Vatican in Rome has a protocol whenever it is that a new pope is being elected. The College of Cardinals are commandeered. They're closed in to a session in which they vote privately to try to ascertain who will be the next pontiff. And after it is, they would have made that election, white smoke emanates from the chimney. And within 45 minutes, the balcony doors swing open and the new pope is introduced. Ladies and gentlemen of the Church of God in Christ, there was a wrinkle in protocol this past April because while it is that the College of Cardinals were sequestered into Rome in the Vatican, they voted privately. White smoke came from the chimney but 45 minutes later, the door still didn't open. As a matter of fact, it took an hour and 15 minutes. And what we didn't realize behind the scenes for those of us who were tuned in to CNN and MSNBC was what was taking so long. After Pope Francis was elected, they took him, Bishop Maynard, into the vestry. And when they took him into the vestry, there were only three pope robes available. They tried to put all three of them on Pope Francis, but none of them fit him. So they called for a seamstress from down the street. They swore her in the secrecy. She made the necessary alterations and adjustments. And after an hour and 15 minutes, the balcony doors were open. I'm here, ladies and gentlemen, at 1 o'clock in the morning. 
because there are some of you who feel like you're running behind schedule because you should have been promoted by now. You should be in a different position by now. You should be operating at a different income level by now. And you're trying to figure out, before I get frustrated, why is it taking so long? And God told me to tell 50 of you, you've already been elected. The only problem is what you've been elected for, they don't have anything your size. So I'm making some alterations and making some adjustments because what you get ready to step into, the old generation couldn't handle, but he's got to make some shifts because what you're getting ready to step into, regular people are not going to be able to understand. And they keep trying to put you in a box that you don't fit in because God has stretched you into another capacity that small-minded people cannot comprehend. He, he, he's putting you in something, but, but the problem is where you're getting ready to go is not prepared for you. And the enemy has tried to fool you as if something is wrong with you. It is not anything wrong with you. It is something wrong with what the church has been trying to put you in. Uh, because we have a limited definition of ministry, we think when you're called, you can only be a preacher. Uh, but that, that there's a different level that God is getting ready to release in the earth realm. And some of you have been called in the business. And, and some of you have been called in the fine arts. And some of you have been called to run a nonprofit, And some of you have been called to do a mentoring program. But because your church doesn't have an understanding of the full breadth of ministry, when you say you're called, they try to give you a microphone. For three centuries, ladies and gentlemen, for, for three centuries in China up until 1947, uh, in China they practice, uh, Dr. Cole, they practice uh, something called lotus feet. L-O-T-U-S. Lotus feet, ladies and gentlemen, is whereby they bind women's feet at the age of 12. Uh, because Chinese men have a dwarfed opinion that women are more attractive if their feet are small. So beginning at 12 years of age, a China girl's feet are bound. Hear me, because it was the thinking that a woman's feet who were unbound would not get married but would be left in the lower strata of the caste system and would end up working a menial job as a farmer. But if your feet were bound, you would in fact find yourself with an upward trajectory. Uh, the problem, ladies and gentlemen, is that if a woman's feet were bound, she could not run. If her feet were bound, hear me, she could not make big steps. If, if her feet were bound, hear me, she could not inflict tremendous strides. So it was all right while she was 12, but by the time she got 30, she had anatomical challenges. And the anatomical challenges were of such that she could not stand up straight, that, that she could not, in fact, walk without a cane and without crutches. She, she was so stifled by being bound that she could not run or step into anything big. I'm not even preaching to you. I'm preaching to somebody behind you who doesn't even understand that for the last 18 months, the enemy's been trying to bind your feet. He's been trying to bind your feet because he's afraid of what you're getting ready to step into. He, 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 he knows if you make one more step, you're getting ready to step into the greatest season of your life. He, he wants you to have a menial existence and he knows that if you step further than where you've already been, everybody around you is going to be intimidated. I, I, I think I've lost you. Maybe I'm too cultural and I'm not theologically in tuned enough. So uh, let me backtrack into Daniel chapter 3. And in Daniel chapter 3, you remember three Hebrew boys named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And watch this. They refused to bow down. They refused to bow down. And they're between 14 and 17 years of age. And the Bible declares that King Nebuchadnezzar got the mightiest men to throw them in the furnace. Now, here's the critical question because you're smarter than I am. 
if they're just 14 to 17 years of age, why does he assign the mightiest men? He assigns the mightiest men because when you are anointed, the enemy doesn't wait till you're old to attack you. He attacks you in your medium season. I'm, I'm talking to those of you when you think about what you went through at 14, 15, 16, 17 years of age, you should have had a nervous breakdown and you should be strung out on drugs, but, but God covered you because he had his hand on your life. Watch this. And, and uh, uh, something is crazy because uh, those of you who are old school, you remember that in a furnace, there is no emergency exit. There is no emergency exit. There's only one way in and there's only one way out. Hear me. But the Bible says, hear me, uh, that the mightiest men threw them into the fiery furnace. All right. Which says you don't even have to go to Bible college or seminary to get this. Hear me. If my feet are bound and my hands are bound and I am thrown, I cannot land standing up. Hallelujah. That, that there's going to be an equilibrium problem. So my hands are bound and my feet are bound and I'm thrown. Here's the problem, ladies and gentlemen, is that when the enemy threw me into the furnace, I landed prostrate. Mm -hmm. So he forced me into a worship position. See, it's easy to praise God when you ain't going through nothing. But I need some folk that been through the fire, but you still got to worship. If, if you going through it right now, but you're not ashamed to give him glory, would you lift up your hand and open up your mouth like you still got worship? All right. Uh, be seated. I'm coming to get you in just one minute. Hear me, and um, so the critical question you gotta uh, you gotta gauge is um, if you throw me in the fiery furnace and there's no way for me to get out, watch this. Why bind my feet? Why bind my feet? Uh, uh, because the enemy knew uh, that if I'm in fire and I start to dance. Uh, something is getting ready to happen. I, I thought I was at a Kojic meeting. If, if, if I can find somebody in the room who don't even understand, watch this. The stenographer shows up at the furnace. Watch what he does. He wipes the steam from the window. He then does a head count and says, we got a problem because we put three men in. Mm -hmm. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But here it is. They're walking around. Now, here's the problem. If I got lotus feet mm -hmm, and my feet have been bound, I'm not supposed to be walking. But while I was in the fire, what the enemy doesn't know, the thing he tried to bind me with burned off of me. I, I need 500 of y'all. God said, if you shout right now, whatever had you bound is coming off for of you. What? What? Hey. Hey. Here, here, here it is. Be seated, please. Be seated right where you are. Be seated right where you are. Hear me. So they're in the furnace. And what had them bound came off of them. Hallelujah. And they start walking around in the fire. God told me to tell 50 of y'all that are not too stuck up to receive it. I'm releasing a Joshua anointing. That every place, the sole of your feet, Step on, you getting ready to have it. Now, if you're not expecting nothing, y'all can sit right there. But if you know my next step is going to take me into my destiny, I dare you to step out on faith like you're getting ready to get a new level, like you're getting ready to get a new assignment. Be seated, please. Please. Be seated, please. Um, um, so, um, if we put a surveillance camera on our text, uh, you'll notice, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that um, uh, Moses is having a jurisdictional meeting. And, and, uh, He's having a jurisdictional meeting and, and he realizes it is now time for transition. That where we are is not the last stop. 
that there's somewhere else that we've got to go. Don't get comfortable where you are. We, we got another move we're getting ready to make. I, I need you to look at somebody who ain't stuck up. Say, this is not it. This, th th this is not it. There's somewhere else God has for me. If, if this was it, I'd be depressed. If this, if this was it, I would be losing my mind. If, if this was it, I would be jumping out of a window. But God's got another step. He says, um, there are, uh, ladies and gentlemen, three million people in the camp. Three million people in the camp. And he says, I need to send a contingency to go survey the promised land. But all of you are not qualified. I, I only need 12 of you. But the 12 who I'm going to send uh, have got to have uh, a visual stigmatism. I need 12 people, hear me, who will not see things as they are. But I need 12 who will see them for what they're getting ready to be. See, some people around you, they're confused about why you're shouting. They think you're shouting over what you got now. And they don't know, I ain't got that much. But what I'm shouting for, God, I wish I could find somebody, is for where I see myself going. Now, now if you don't see yourself going nowhere, you ain't got to shout. But if you believe September is going to be better than June, I need you to shout like you know something better. Be seated, please. Um, um, huh. Be seated, please. Um, uh, Kojic, y'all got a spirit of disobedience. Be seated. Um, uh, right where y'all. He says, um, I need you to see stuff. Hallelujah. Not for where it is, but for where it's getting ready to go. And there's got to be a confirmation in your spirit here it is, that upsets the enemy called average. Uh, only 70 of you going to get it. Everybody else, you can eavesdrop. Uh, but for the 70 of you, hear me, I need you to just declare it out loud. Something big is getting ready to happen to me. That's, hallelujah, I, I, I don't know where you are, but I, I, I need 50 of you. If you feel that thing in your spirit, I, I need you to shout out loud, something big is getting ready. God, I can't find nobody. I need you to shout out loud, something big. My, my biggest check is getting ready to come. My, my biggest anointing is getting ready to come. Something big is, um, is, uh, is getting ready to happen. I, I need you to just elbow your neighbor and say something big is getting ready to happen to me. This is the smallest I'm ever going to be. When, 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 when you find me the next time, you're going to see me in my wealthy place. Some, something big is getting ready. There's a promotion with my name on it. Something big is getting ready. Hallelujah. It's getting ready to happen. Hallelujah. Just uh, don't talk to anybody in particular, but just release it in the atmosphere just so the earth knows that it's on the way. Would you just say it with an attitude? Something big is getting ready to happen to me. Now, now if y'all thinking on something small, please don't say anything. But I need you to think that where you are right now is the smallest you ever going to be. That in the next 48 hours, everything you've been praying for is getting ready to to come to prayer. Somebody shout something big. Be seated, please. Please. Um, say something. So he sends 12 people uh, into the camp and, um, and they're land developers. And they come back uh, with their quarterly report. And uh, and Overseer Moses uh, says to him, I, I, I need a full diagnostic study um, as to what you found on the land. And notice the report that they came back with. Watch this. Is that the people in the place I'm getting ready to go, watch this, are strong. All right. For where you're getting ready to go, ladies and gentlemen, in the next season of your life, you cannot afford to be connected to weak people. Oh, yeah. 
Hallelujah. You, you, you cannot be connected with people who are secretly jealous, intimidated, and threatened about the call of God that's on your life. You, you got to be connected to people who are going to be celebrating where you getting ready to go. You don't need nobody draining you to death. You need somebody who can cheer. Says something. Says something. Where are you getting ready to go? Weak people can't live there. Only strong people. I, hallelujah. I, I don't know y'all that well. Uh, that's why your circle has been downsizing. Mm. Uh, you, you, you ain't got that many people close to you in this season. Y'all ain't talking back to me because God says I'm tired of people mooching off of you, leeching you off of you, using you. I'm tired of you always having to be there for other people. I need strong people beside. Says I'm, I'm sending strong people because you're getting ready to walk into the biggest opportunity of your life. Hallelujah. What, what you get ready to get is a personal surprise party that, that eyes have not seen and, and ears have not heard. You, you don't need nobody around you who ain't believing God for something big. Hallelujah. God, God told me to tell you, you are in good condition tonight because the person beside you don't want nothing from you. Uh, look at the person beside you. Tell them I'm not jealous of you. Look, look at them. Tell them I'm not threatened by you. Tell, tell them I am not insecure and to prove it to you when I give God this next praise it ain't for me but I'm getting ready to shout for what you walking into do me a favor would you shout for whoever's beside you like you see them hey. I can't hear nobody you ought to lift up your voice like you see your neighbor Whoa. Hey, is that all you got some of y'all better switch seats. But if you see yourself going. Be seated, please. Be, be seated right where y'all are. Be seated right where y'all are. Be seated right where y'all are. Watch this. If the person beside you didn't shout right, do me a favor. Shout for yourself like you see yourself. Go. I can't hear no praises. You ought to lift up your voice like I see this is the biggest season of my life. Be seated, please. Um, says, um, says, um, what kind of people? Um, what kind of people live there? It says, strong people live there. Second inventory says, um, what kind of crops do they grow? What kind of crops do they grow? And uh, you'll notice they only grow, Bishop Maynard, one thing. They only grow grapes. But here's what's crazy, and I hope y'all don't miss it, is that when they arrive on the property, watch this, it is not seed time. It's harvest. God, y'all in the slow class. Let me see if I can help you. Watch this. And the grapes are already in full bloom. Watch this. But they didn't plant them. Mm -hmm. They didn't plant them. Watch this. The enemy planted them. Uh, but they take them and take it back. God, God told me to tell you what you're getting ready to get next. It's what the enemy thought he stole from you. He's getting ready to give you your stuff back. And it's getting ready to be bigger. Um, okay. Um, I, I think I lost you. I, I, I understand. We, we, we got a communication gap. I, I, I see what happened. Because uh, you assumed I was talking about regular size grapes. Please forgive me. I, I, I see what just happened. Uh, the Bible declares that the stalk of grape was so big, they had to run a pole through it. Mm -hmm. They had to put it on their shoulder and they had to begin to carry it. God, I don't know whether y'all can handle it. God said your next blessing is not even your size. 
Your next blessing, watch this, is going to bless the people who stuck with you when you ain't have nothing. Your next blessing is going to be so big that anybody... Um, oh, okay, um, I, 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 I think I lost you again. Um, please do me a favor. Just look down your room and say, y'all ain't got to shout. Y'all... I, Look, 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 look down your section and tell them you ain't got to scream. You, 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 you ain't even got to yell. God help me. Praise is what I do. And when I praise God this next time, whoever is sitting on my row is getting ready to walk in the overflow. If you believe there's an overflow anointing on your life, I need 500 of you to shout like something big is getting ready to happen. Uh, I can't hear nobody. You ought to lift up your voice. Something big is still ready to happen. Be seated, please. Be seated, please. Um, hallelujah. Your next blessing is going to be so big. Hallelujah. You're going to pay for your nieces and nephews to go to college. You're, God, I can't hear no worshipers. He, your next blessing is going to be so big, you're going to take your mama off her job. Your, your next blessing is going to be so big, you're going to pay off your student loan by September. God, God said, I need you to shout like a big blessing. All right. Be seated, please. Be seated, please. Please. Um, um, uh. hmm. I'm trying to move Bishop Porter, but I need 80 of y'all to just shout something big. Some, I'm, I'm trying to keep myself together, but something big is getting ready to happen. And at this, Moses silenced the people and said, are we going to go after it? Are you going to go after what God promised you? Are you, are you going to believe him for the prophetic word over your life? Are, are you going to pursue what you put in your prayer journal? Are you, are you going to respond what you heard 3 o'clock in the morning when he woke you up? Are you, are you going to walk in the favor your grandmother prayed over your life when you were still 6 years old? Are you going to stand in the anointing that you know God has for your life? Shall we pursue? And they came back um, with the report. No, we shouldn't go after it. Here's what's crazy. We shouldn't go after it. Why? Um, not because of a faith problem, but because of a self-esteem issue. Here's what the text says in the dangling participle of verse number 34. Is we see ourselves. Watch this. We see ourselves as grasshoppers. Watch this. And as a consequence, that's how the enemy sees us. You just missed it. Um, here it is. The revelation embedded in the text is this. The enemy only sees you how you see yourself. So the shout you get ready to give, God help me, is going to give the enemy a nervous breakdown. God. What you mean, Rev? Because when I shout this next time, it's because I see myself as a millionaire. God, I, I, I wish I could find somebody in here. If there's anybody in the room who knows the enemy, better not mess with me. Because God said, touch not my anointed. I, I want you to shout. This ought to be your best shout. I want you to shout based off of how you see yourself. If you don't see yourself, don't say anything. But shout how you see. Oh, hey. Come on, I can't hear nobody. I need you to see yourself graduating. I need you to see yourself owning a business. I need you to see yourself debt free. Shout how you see yourself.
Be seated. And I, I only got four more times to tell you that. Be seated. Um, watch this. And uh, he said, "Shall we pursue?" And, and the spokesman for the group said, "No, we can't do it because we look like grasshoppers in our in our own eyes." And preachers, here's where we find the tension in the text. The tension in the text is this. Is, um, I'm trying to figure out um, how it is they believe they can't do it based off of the church they go to. They're a member uh, of an organization that believes in miracles. They are part of a reformation that has seen the demonstration of signs and wonders. They are part of an elect body that knows how to pray. God, I wish I was preaching to somebody in here and, and see chains fall off. I'm, I'm trying to see how they talk themselves out of it. They, they, they have been, ladies and gentlemen, under a presiding bishop who um, um, they had been under a presiding bishop uh, who when he lifted up his hands uh, the enemy would get defeated they, God I wish I was with some Bible people they, uh, they, they, they were under a leader hallelujah that when, when he hit a rock water would start coming out uh, God, they, 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 they were under a leader here it is that while it is that they're driving to the Red Sea and look in the rear view mirror and see Pharaoh on their back say what do we do and he said if you lift up your hands water is getting ready to be parted I, I wish I had some worshipers in here some of y'all gonna drown cause your hands are down but, but you don't even understand when you lift up your hand everything you were supposed to drown in you getting ready to walk through when you lift up your hand Um, and the 12 of them said um, the 12 of them said we can't do it and I take issue with them because obviously none of the 12 were a part of the evangelism department because there should have been one conscientious objector to speak up for the crowd uh, and say on behalf of the 12, I see myself as a grasshopper, but because I got faith, uh, I don't want to stay this size. Uh, now, in order for me to be bigger, that's relative. Uh, because I need to know how much bigger you want to be. Uh, uh, you got to be specific uh, about what you need God to do. And, and, and they said what I'm saying on your behalf tonight. Lord, make me bigger. Yes. Uh, make me bigger. And I, I, I want to know how much bigger uh, do you want God to make you? And uh, what they had to have said to themselves is, Lord, make me bigger than my haters. Because uh, uh, I don't want to owe nobody nothing. When, when I walk into this next season, God help me, I don't want to deal with folk that smile in my face and stab me in the back. God, I need you to make me bigger than the people who thought I was going to need them to get to the next level. Make me bigger than the folk who tried to talk down to me and tried to minimize who I was because they get to sit up front and they're able to wear purple and are able to think they can talk to me any kind of way. Lord, make me bigger. And if you're going to make me bigger than my enemies, um, maybe, God, because I don't want to stay this size, make me bigger, here it is, than anybody who's ever lived in my family. Um, I keep hearing about generational curses. But God, I want you to know you can trust me to usher in a generational blessing. Hallelujah. Some, some of you who I'm talking to tonight, your greatest level of attack did not come from strangers. 
Uh, it came from people who had your last name. Uh, had your DNA, had your blood type. God help me. And you're looking around the table trying to figure out how am I related to them? We don't even think the same way. We, we ain't even got the same kind of drive. God told me to tell you, he put you in the family as an undercover favor agent to show the rest of your family what favor is supposed to look like. Lord, make me bigger. Be seated. I, um, I only got two more times to tell you that. Um, and then I'm going home. I, uh, it, it'd be so easy. Um, this is going to be the test of the depth of your spirituality. Um, bigger than my, my enemies it can resonate. My family is identifiable. But this is for those of you who have an unquenchable thirst for the things of God. Hallelujah. And I, I don't expect everybody to respond. Maybe about 300 of you, everybody else, you can just go update your Facebook page. But everybody else, the 300 of you who I'm talking to tonight, hear me, God, even if you don't make my bank account bigger, the square footage of my home bigger. If, if I ain't never driving a Maybach or a Bentley, I can't hear nobody. Lord, what I'm crying for at 1.30 in the morning is make my anointing bigger. And I, I, I know this ain't for everybody. Some, so some of y'all ready to go back to the room and others of you are hungry, but I need 800 of you who want a bigger anointing than what you got right now with no background music, with no tambourine, with no praise team, would you lift up your voice and open up your mouth like you want to see your anointing kid pick up? Hey, hey. I can't hear nobody. God, hear me. I, I need you to cry out under God like you see yourself laying on hands. I, I, I want you to open up your mouth like you know you're going to prophesy and speak those things that are not as though they already are. Make my anointing bigger. I want to be able to cast out demons. God, I can't find no real worshipers. I, I want to be able to dream, and when I wake up, I want to remember the dream. I, God, I can't hear nobody. When I lift up hand, I'm believing by faith that whatever I touch, it will be healed in Jesus' name. I, I, I need 800 of you to say, I'm tired of hearing about it. God, let me flow in it for myself. I want a bigger anointing. Hallelujah. 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 I, I want a bigger anointing. Be, be seated tonight and I'm I'm about finished. Thank you. I'm doing the best I can. Be seated. Um, hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I, I need 50 of you right where you are. Would you just shout out loud, something bigger is coming. I'll close the way that I started. Um, even while you're seated, even while you're seated, I want you to take somebody by the hand. Hallelujah. Even while you're seated, I got to show you one last revelation, and then we get ready to go. Hallelujah. I'm getting ready to move, but 50 of you, would you just scream out loud, something bigger is coming. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm trying to go, but I feel something getting ready to move in the building. Hallelujah. I don't know where it is, but I need somebody who's getting ready to step into the greatest season of your life. Would you just shout out loud, something bigger is coming. Make sure somebody's hand is in your hand. This is the smallest you ever going to be. 
This is the smallest income you'll ever have. This is the lowest position you will ever occupy. Something big is getting ready to happen to you. I need you to make sure somebody's hand is in your hand. You're going to let it go in just about 60 seconds. I'm thankful. I'm thankful there. There's some 1,200 of you in this room. I'm glad you came. Um, 1,200 of you. I'm glad you came, but I don't even know why you're here. Because I'm only assigned to 12 of you. And God told me to tell you, you don't even understand why you've been going through what you've been dealing with the last 18 months. The attack has nothing to do with you. The enemy knows uh, if he can mess with you, your entire family will stay in bondage. But he says, based off of what you get ready to do next, the anointing, the assignment on your life is bigger than you. I can't hear no worshipers. I said the assignment on your life is bigger than you. Would you just pull on that neighbor? Pull on that neighbor. Pull on that neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Say that ain't me pulling you. That's your assignment pulling you. I, pull on that neighbor. Say that's your destiny calling on you. That, that ain't me pulling you. That's the call of God. When I count to three, the hour is far spent, minstrels in worship. When I count to three, there will be a sound of worship in this room. And here's what's crazy. I need you to hear me softly, sir. This shout is not for you. Did you hear what I just said? I said this shout is not for you because the assignment is bigger than you. When you shout, your entire family's future is on the line. God, help me. When you scream, not another man in your family is going to jail. God, I don't, don't do it yet. When you yell, nobody else in your family will have a heart attack, will have strokes, will have cancer. I can't hear nobody. He said, when you yell, no more out of wedlock babies in your family. No, no more molestation. No more incest. When I count to three and you lift up your voice, every person in your family who has backslidden out of church, is on their way back to ministry in the next six hours. This shout ain't even for you. This is for your cousins. God, I can't hear nobody. This is for your sister in the street. This for your brother that lost his way. I can't hear nobody. One, where's the church of God in Christ? Two, hey, I need you to travail like you know it's on the way. Three, lift up. Lift. Where are the worshippers? Where are the worshippers? I need you to cry out unto God. Something big is getting ready to happen. Did you hear what I just said? I need you to cry out unto God like you getting a college scholarship. 
I need you to lift up your voice like you being offered a promotion. Something big. With that hand lifted, I want you to cry. Here it is. This is not a praise. This is a lamentation. With that hand lifted, I want you to open up your mouth and cry out unto God. Watch this. Like you see your family in a healthy place. I'm tired of a dysfunctional family. I'm, I'm tired of a petty family. Lift up your voice like God is going to do something big. Come on, lift up that hand. Open up your mouth. Hey. Lift up your mouth. Would you cry out unto God? Cry out unto God. Where are you, church of God in Christ? Lift up your voice and scream like God is going to do something big. I can't hear nobody. Lift up that hand. I worship. I just want to tell you that I love you more than I need that hand lifted. I need that hand lifted. Cry out unto God. I love I just want to tell you that I love you more than come on, come on, come on. everybody lift up that voice I love oh I worship I just want to tell you that I love you more than come on lift up that voice lift up that hand cry out unto God I love I love you Jesus I, I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. That I love you. Lord, I love you. More than. More than it. Listen. With no music, lift up that voice. Lift up that voice, everybody. I love. Hey. I love you, Jesus. Come on, I can't hear nobody. I worship. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. That I love you. Lord, I love you. More than. More than anything. With no music, with that hand lifted, open up your mouth and just begin to worship him. Begin to worship him. Lift up that hand towards heaven. Lift up that hand. I want to pray for you.
Lift that hand as high as you can. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, oh. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Oh. Oh. Lift up that hand, please. Lift up that hand. It's not a stick up. It's a surrender. Lift up that hand. I speak over the life of every lifted hand that within the next six weeks something big is getting ready to happen for you. I speak over every lifted hand that what you get next won't match your background. What you're getting ready to get from God, you are not qualified for. It doesn't line up with your credit score. It doesn't line up with your education. But because of your worship tonight, some of what you're getting ready to get, you did not ask for. You're getting ready to get it. Because people tried to block you from having it. Lift up that hand. Over the next six weeks, you're getting ready to step into a new place in God. I'm giving God permission to interrupt your sleep. To wake you up in the middle of the night with dreams and visions. About what your 2015 is going to look like. God, I can't find any real worshipers. With, with that hand lifted, he's going to give you a sneak preview of your child's future. With that hand lifted, he's getting ready to bless some of you. And you don't even have a mentor. You don't have a manual. God, help me. You don't even know how to do what you've been called to do. But God is going to give you wisdom for the assignment. I speak over lifted hands. That over the next six weeks, you're getting ready to step in the houses your grandmother would have been honored to clean. You're getting ready to drive cars your grandfather would have boasted about being the chauffeur for. God, I can't hear anybody. You're getting ready to walk into a level of anointing that has only been witnessed in third world nations. God, I can't hear nobody. With that hand lifted, go get your passport. You're too global to be stuck in some small city. There's an assignment on your life. Hallelujah. Stop accommodating people who are not your size. I believe by faith. You have come out of your smallest season simply because God wanted to see if you could prove to the world, watch this, that you could suffer with class. Folk didn't even know how bad it was for you. They had no idea you didn't even have gas in the car. I can't find nobody in here. But God told me to tell you, your small season was over at midnight. God, I can't hear nobody. That beginning at 6 a.m., everything you've been looking for God to do is getting ready to line up in decency and in order. I need the anointed elect of God. Open up your mouth now like you know it's on the way.